Good evening. Welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study. My name is Supra Plows and I'm one of the leaders at Dream Center Las Vegas. The topic for my discussion today is walking in the anointing. There's a passage in scripture that has bugged me for the longest time. And I've thought about it, tried to read on it, tried to look for commentaries, but never actually got the answer till recently I read a book by Dave Robeson and got the answer. So wherever in the Bible, in the Gospels, this passage is mentioned, it's in the same exact sequence. So I know God is telling us something, but I couldn't really put two and two together. So the passage that I'm referring to is Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 through 17. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them and then... They will fast, but the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. That is now. That is us. So this is for us. Then Jesus continues with the scriptures on verses 16 to 17. And this is where my confusion was. So they're asking about fasting and Jesus goes, no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved. Of course, we know that if you put new wine into old wineskins, the new wine will expand when it ferments and because the old wine skin is not pliable, it's going to have to burst. Okay. And again, the same thing for a piece of patch of, new patch of cloth that you're putting on an old jeans, perhaps. So they're telling Jesus that John's disciples and the Pharisees fast but Jesus' disciples don't fast, and Jesus tells them they don't fast because he is with them. So now, at that time, they were between two covenants. The Old Covenant, which is the Old Testament, and the New Covenant, which is the New Testament. Now, so we know that Jesus had previously sent out 70 disciples and told them to go. He put his anointing on them, and they actually went out and cast out devils, heal the sick, and they came back with great joy. And they said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. But they were walking under Jesus' anointing. So basically, Jesus was saying that while he's with them, they didn't have to fast because his anointing was on them. But the day will come when Jesus will be taken away and there will be a change of covenants. On that day, they, we will have to fast. We're in the new covenant. So, again, you don't put new wine into old bottles and new patches on old garments. It doesn't make sense. What does that even mean? How does that relate to fasting? Well, I'm going to tell you. What Jesus was saying is that the moment you are born again, your spirit is seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, he has to leave us in this old earthly bodies, this old wine skin. And one day the trumpet will sound, and this earthly body is going to be transformed from corruptible to incorruptible. <coughs> Excuse me. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, 
For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Our bodies will be glorified in the time it takes a person to blink. Just like that, we will be glorified. That At that moment, you, own, you, you will not own your own body, which was given to you from the seed of Adam. You will have a glorified body, glorified body, a new spirit, new soul, and a glorified body that's given to us by Jesus Christ. But meanwhile, just like generations of past, the old saints, they can testify that we're still wearing our old garment, our old wineskin that is dying day by day and is capable of sinning. Again, Dave Robeson says this, that Galatians 5.16 does not say, this I say then, walk in the spirit and all the warrings and lust of the flesh will go away. No. Instead, it says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So basically, even though we're born again, our flesh is going to lust, our flesh is going to sin, we're going to fall into temptation. But God as Jesus was giving us the answer to how we fight that, to live in this old body, yet live like we have a glorified body. How? How do we do that on this earth? That's why Jesus said, when I'm taken away from you, there will be a change of covenants. Your spirit, our spirit, is going to be seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. But unfortunately, he has to leave us with our old wineskin. That's okay though, because fasting is going to have the same effect on your old wineskin as if you went out and bought a new one. Fasting will preserve your old wineskin so the new wine, which is his power, can operate through it until he gives us a new wineskin, the glorified body. Fasting preserves the old wineskin against sin. It helps put to death the deeds of the flesh while the new wine operates within the old wineskins. So the new wine can still be flowing through this earthly fleshly body and we can live in this body without sinning by fasting. Remember, our fasting doesn't move God. It moves us to a place where we can receive from God. Fasting destroys the hold that the flesh has had on our lives so that instead of operating out of the flesh, we can continually operate out of the spirit. You know, it can be hard to fast sometimes, especially if you've never fasted before. But I will challenge you to try fasting. Even if you have to try half a day and then go to a day and then go to two days. And it doesn't have to be just water all day. It could be a liquid fast, which means you could be drinking juices, or it could be a Daniel fast where you have, you know, no meat, no desserts, no sweets, but you can have fresh fruits and vegetables and brown rice, beans. And you can try different kinds of fasting until you get into a habit of fasting, and then you will see how Things change, how you get to view things differently, how you have more patience, more compassion, how you will not go to the negative way of thinking about everything, how if a doctor were to give you a bad report, you will not immediately agree with him, but you will know how to fight in your spirit, man. That's how we war. We war and the tools God has given us, fasting, speaking in tongues, praying without ceasing, which is meditating on his word, putting his word in your heart that you will not sin against him. So think on this, ponder on this, so you can actually carry the anointing with you all the time. Because Jesus said some demons only come out through fasting and prayer. So fasting 
will help you get in partnership with God. Our spirit man is sitting in heavenly places, but we can also have our body modified so that we're putting it to death so that we do not have to sin like a normal unbeliever. But even a believer who's not fasting will not have the power that an unbeliever, that a fasting believer has. So I will ask you and challenge you to see how fasting will change and how things will seem less of a burden. So thank you and have a good night.